the Southern Kern Unified School District. Please listen to the following options as our menu has changed. If you know the four-digit extension for the department you wish to speak with, you may enter it at any time. Para Español o Prima Dos. Press 1 for absences and attendance, 3 for payroll, 4 for enrollment and educational services, 5 for human resources, 6 for accounts payable, 7 for special education, 8 for superintendent's office, 9 for transportation. You have reached the Southern Kern Unified Southern Kern Unified School District. Please listen to the following options as our menu has changed. If you know the four-digit extension for the department you wish to speak with, you may enter it at any time. Para Español o Prima Dos. Press 1 for absences and attendance, 3 for payroll, 4 for enrollment and educational services, 5 for human resources, 6 for accounts payable, 7 for special education, Eight for superintendent's office, nine for transportation. You have reached the Southern Kern Unified School District. Please listen to the following options as our menu has changed. If you know the four digit extent. that has been disconnected or is no longer in service. If you feel you have reached this recording in the education eight
Thank you, Mr. President. You've reached the voicemail of Alvin Select. I cannot come to the phone right now, or I am screening all calls I do not recognize. Please leave a message, and I will get back to you as soon as possible. Thank you very much. Bye. Hi, Bob. I'm looking at your YouTube right now, but you have no sound. And so I'm saying turn the sound on so that YouTube works correctly. Thank you.
Mod bin select. Hello, Bob. Should be online. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. No, no. There's no sound coming in your YouTube. No sound. Hmm? No sound. Well. Video okay, but no sound. Yeah, yeah there's a new link on the website. Go to the SKUSD website on the homepage, and there's a new link. Click on that link, and that's the new stream. That's what I did. I looked at... <laughs> the Southern Kern homepage? Yeah. But that's what I looked. I, that's what I... But I'll do it again. It's on the home page, right? Yeah. <coughs> ref ref refresh the page. It's an actual YouTube link. Okay, there it is. Southern Kern Unified School District. Go to announce. Go to announcements. Announcements. Yes. And then see where it says new link. YouTube. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. The there we go. Leaks, the, uh, Thank you. Like sure. Finally, uh, sending out their report based off okay. of uh, the sure. tax revenue for fiscal year twenty two twenty three. So. Um, Delve more into that a little bit when I get into the PowerPoint. Thank you. Thank you. Assistant Superintendent of Instruction Personnel, Dr. Nadeau. We had our, uh, our Ethics Studies Committee uh, meeting uh, today where we continue to review the Ethics Study this model and, uh, and generate ideas for continued work on the uh, development of district lens. The next steps committee consists of uh, different stakeholders. We'll have our next meeting on uh, Wednesday, January 10th, 2024. We also had our district advisory council uh, meeting uh, today, our DAC meeting. And we went over different highlights and reports from the school sites, as well as uh, obtain um, input for the, the uh, new cycle of the health cap full accountability plan. Uh, so that's what we did in regards to uh, our DAC meeting. And then on December 12th, I uh, participated in a recentering California English language arts and English language development framework to our webinar series. We focused on um, updates as it pertains to the framework, as well as uh, designated and integrated with uh, Upcoming professional development uh, next, next year in January. The year it's going to be um, Dr. Wetzel will be providing um, professional development for high priority standards and learning progressions. Third, fifth grade grade level chairs will be here in the boardroom January 9th, 2024. And then Dr. Fisher will continue professional development uh, online via Zoom on teacher clarity, the learning intentions, and success criteria on Wednesday, January 10th for elementary focus and January 17th, secondary focus. That concludes my report. And then uh, happy holidays uh, to everyone. And come here. Thank you. Assistant Superintendent, Special Education, Dr. Brown. Hello, everybody, and welcome. Um, I really don't have a lot to say today. We're just kind of winding down and preparing for break. So, uh, happy holidays to everyone. I hope they're all safe and blessed and, and um, enjoy your break. That's it for me. And thank you. Associate Superintendent of Human Resources, Um, I too don't have a lot um, tonight, um, but I just want to wish everybody a Merry Christmas and hope that everybody has um, a great time off and, you know, gets time to rest and, you know, enjoy their family and, and whatever they spend the holidays with and um, back ready in, in January to finish off. Superintendent's report. 
Well, good evening. Welcome, everyone. Welcome all those who are joining us from home. Um, thank you, uh, John. It's always a pleasure to meet you as well. I look forward to our monthly meetings. Um, tomorrow, the cabinet has our visit to West Park Elementary School, and we're looking forward to visiting Mr. Holmes and uh, Ms. Hammonds, uh, Mrs. Hammonds, uh, and all the faculty and staff there and um, getting to see all the wonderful things going on at West Park. Um, I also uh, met today, uh, we had Robert and I met uh, along with these ladies with uh, our um, risk management team uh, at JPA and uh, it's always great to meet with them and make sure that we are following procedures and protocols for all, all sorts of, and all sorts of areas. <coughs> Um, including uh, making sure our kids are not outside when it's freezing cold and when they need to be inside. So um, we have a safety meeting tomorrow, uh, and I hope uh, everyone is able to attend the safety meeting and maybe review some of the uh, issues that we've talked about in the past with regard to um, making sure our, our campuses are protected uh, and uh, from outsiders and also looking at things that we need to address, and especially during the winter months. So uh, I'm excited about that. Um, I also want to take this opportunity to just wish everybody, you know, uh, a peaceful and enjoyable holiday with family and friends, and hopefully no one's gets sick during that time. And I'm not talking about <laughs> really I'm not but anyway I do wish everyone I don't want to get sick myself uh, I have a tendency to get sick when I'm home so um, but um, I wish everyone a wonderful holiday all of our parents and all of our students and, and community members out there um, so now um, Madam President I will present the Attendance wards for November. Yes, ma'am. November. Okay. 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 The great thing that, with the exception of one school, one school, Mr. Boshna, uh everybody's attendance went up in November, and this is really good to see. Um, December is always a tough one, but November, everybody's attendance went up, so I'm very, very excited about that. So, best elementary attendance with 93.70% West Park Elementary. Best attendance secretary, uh, secondary, uh, even though there was a slight decline, Mr. Bajna, still with 92.03% Roseman High School. Catching right. up, very close. Right. Very close. <laughs> Just very, very close. <laughs> and the most improved this month of November, they grew 1.88%. <clears throat> and I don't see anyone here. No. 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 Rare Earth High School. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. So we'll make sure you know that's this. Um, so I, I just wanted to encourage everybody. Uh, I met with A2A recently, and our attendance is doing better. Um, typically, there, December, there we see a huge decline in attendance, December, early January. But please encourage your kids. Make sure that all of you who are winning get the ice cream parties, and we're, we're doing things on site to promote uh, good attendance in our students. Board member communications. Well, 
Thank you, everybody, for coming out tonight, except um, have a good Christmas break and a happy holiday. Um, I think we have some people that are going to be here in just a few minutes. Um, I want to thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Um, you'll, you'll have fun for the next year. Uh, we had a, a good year last year. We got a lot of stuff done. With Sonny in charge, I'm pretty sure we'll get a lot more done. Not saying that we didn't get enough, but we had enough. <laughs> um, Mr. B, <coughs> missed you this morning. Um, but uh, Robert and I invaded your uh, gym. I don't know if you heard. Yeah. We came out to uh, do an evaluation for the audio system that was purchased uh, last week. So uh, the gentleman, once we get the equipment in and so forth, then we'll start looking at getting it installed. Uh, he pointed out a couple of things for us, um, but he'll take care of that. And Ed, we did come down to Tropico and also did the survey, but we we're not ready for Tropico as of yet. But we saw some things, and one of the things that will please Barbara that we actually found out why the sound is bad in the gym is because the speakers are pointed to the corners and not in. So uh, was, he came up with some solutions on that, and he will be getting back to sweet water on uh, those solutions. And it's not just the gym, it's also the cafeteria area, and to include your amphitheater out back. Right. So we're trying to handle, get it all done for you. So, But I'm confident uh, with the gentleman that uh, is recommended to us to do the work that we will probably have excellent systems and uh, based on that um i wish everybody merry christmas and happy new year and look forward to seeing everybody back next year um i will be out for a period of time i don't know yet uh i will be having back surgery so i thought i'd let everybody know if you don't see me that's the reason that's the lot so other than that turn it over to Happy holidays. <laughs> uh, just wish everybody a, a good vacation and uh, Merry Christmas to everybody. Uh, and that's it. Hey, hello guys. Good to see you guys here and, and there. Um, I want to say happy holidays. I did get the opportunity to see the first graders at West Park, sing the little heart stab, sing all the Christmas songs. They were so stinking cute. Um, they've done like, a great job with them, making sure that they knew all the signs and were singing. They were just really adorable. Um, I also made it to the dance uh, at West Park, and it was a lot of fun. I think we could learn from a lot of things that went on there. Like, we just need more. Um, more presence, more adult presence. Like, hey, stop running around, don't flip, stop all that. Um, but I feel like the kids had a really good time and hopefully we can do more things like that that brings the family out and everybody has a good time, but we love to know, hey guys, like, this isn't babysitting, like, you gotta watch your kids. Y'all gotta watch your kids, like, they were going crazy. But they had a lot of fun. But um, that's all I have, I hope everybody has a happy holiday. Um, what is it? Happy Hanukkah, Merry Christmas, Happy Kwanzaa, wherever you celebrate. Um, uh, subcommittee communications? Nothing today. Okay. Um, comments from the public? None. None. All right. Um, consent items A through D. Any questions? Change the 
Oh, Julian? Yes. Right. <laughs> <laughs> change of Board of Trustees July regular board meeting date to Tuesday, July 16th, 2024. Previously scheduled for Wednesday, July 17th, 2024. By request, I will make a motion. I will second. All right. A motion by Mario, second by Moore. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Uh, absent for years. And she gets to think she actually goes to ask to do that. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, business and operations. Approved resolution 23-2406 regarding the annual and five-year accounting of development fees for 2022-2023 fiscal year in the following fund or account. Fund 25, Capital Facilities Fees Fund, Mr. Irving. All right. So this is a uh, annual resolution uh, regarding our <coughs> developer fees uh, fund. So money that is collected from new homes being built, people remodeling their house above 500 square feet, or any new commercial development in the community where um, a, a fee uh, is assessed uh, on behalf of the district to address uh, student capacity and housing for students. So, um, you know, if new houses are coming in, the district's giving money to make sure there's adequate classroom space for, you know, if those houses have children involved. Or if they're planning on a remodel and they don't necessarily have children, eventually they may have somebody else that has kids that live in that house that, you know, attend the district. So, that, you know. Um, so this is a breakdown of what we did with that money over the last uh, fiscal year. Um, so we uh, started a balance of $971,000. And we ended the year at just over a million dollars at one million thirty thousand, uh, where we collected a, about four hundred forty thousand dollars in fees and another twenty thousand dollars in interest. Um, so that's the revenue portion of it. You know. And um, the, on the expense side, um, the main thing that uh, we continue to use uh, Fund Twenty Five for is the leases for the portable classrooms that we have around the district. Which uh, consisted of uh, $313,000, so about 61% of uh, the uh, Fund 25. The next highest uh, expense in there is the TMS Classroom Expansion Project, um, where while the project is primarily funded through uh, Fund 35 and uh, state facilities funds, the district has a uh, matching contribution that we must uh, make uh, in addition to the state funds. So in order to uh, um, meet that maxing, uh, since this project is to increase student uh, housing in terms of classroom space, uh, we've used uh, $83,000 of Fund 25 uh, towards expenses for that, primarily uh, architect and uh, part, uh, architect fees, and then uh, some of the uh, soils uh, engineering uh, expenses. And then the next um, pieces or you know things are ranked from seven percent to less than a you know one percent of what was remaining. But other things that we've uh, used one twenty five for are the uh, um, relocatable classrooms uh, at West Park. The current construction there that is all being funded by uh, fund twenty five. So by the end of uh, Fiscal year last year, we'd spent $28,000 there. Um, ongoing AB 1200 compliance, uh, which is uh, the uh, requirement that we put our larger project up with it. And then administrative fees done by the county, recoding the floors at the uh, middle school and high, high school. A uh, little bit of the uh, universal pre K uh, project at RES. Um, before it was uh, discontinued, but uh, some of the architect fees. And then finally, the uh, fee for the developer fee report which is what lets the district know how much we can charge based off of the state allocation board uh, rate for uh, incoming developer fees. Okay, 
Um, out of all of that, the two ongoing projects uh, that were funded out of Fund 25 are the real updatables at West Park as well as, weirdly enough, the TMS expansion. Um, any questions? I just gave you a lot of information uh, pretty quickly. Uh, quick clarification. Mm -hmm. uh, the developer fees, I thought they were at uh, 100 square feet or more instead of 500. <clears throat> I think you are correct. Off the top of my head, I'm probably misremembering that. It's been a while since I've, anybody's called me about them, thankfully, knock on wood, uh, other than just the new home developer. So who do we need to contact to where I can be yeah. incorporated, redirect them towards Baker stuff? Okay. Thank you. Motion by Mario, second by Green. I will let you go first. Aye. Now, all in favor? Aye. I'm by. Okay, first interim report, the survey. Okay, I'm going to stand up for this now. Alrighty, so first interim report. Um, annually, are a series of reports that get done. Um, it you know, starts with the budget and then ends with uh, unaudited actuals for the fiscal year. Uh, the interim reports are, how are we doing in those middle phases of, okay, we set up the budget at the beginning of the year, the following September, you know, talk about our businesses, you know, how we ended last year. But this is, you know, the piece that, you know, checks things, uh, you know, partial through the year because weirdly enough when we have a budget set up and <coughs> the state hasn't finalized their budget yet. There's discrepancies, weirdly enough, because well, nobody in Sacramento called me and said, hey, what do you think, Robert? Mm -hmm. So, uh, this is, you know, just how are we doing as a whole, is to, you know, and, yeah. So, always like to start off with uh, the good news of the revenue. Um, revised revenues are at 71 million. This is just general fund only. Uh, the, not include, doesn't include cafeteria developer fees, anything else. Um, it's an increase of uh, four million based off of higher than anticipated enrollment for this year, than anticipated payroll taxes, uh, not payroll, property taxes uh, projected by the county. And then the continuation of the LLP funding, where I don't know if you remember at the time budget was adopted, there were questions on there's an 8.22 COLA and some of that's coming out of one-time funds. What else, what other programs is the state going to pull from to be able to fund that? Where wasn't sure if the LLP was going to be impacted. It turned out to be another uh, grant program, or well, two other grant programs were impacted versus uh, the Expand the Learning Opportunity Program funding. So, um, our unrestricted revenue, so our just um, uh, property tax, our EPA, our uh, supplemental and uh, concentration dollars from the uh, LCAP due to our unduplicated uh, pupil percentage. Um, they're based off of the LCFF uh, calculations. So there's a uh, calculator that uh, FICMAC puts out that, you know, takes our historical data, takes what's given them, and it turns into local data entry. And then, you know, thankfully for me, a lot of formulas are, you know, filled in and numbers are populated that I don't have to sit and go through well all of the ed code myself to figure out, okay, what percentage of what goes to where. So, And then um, our restricted funds include 
a little bit of what, you know, the remaining pot of money for SR3 now, where we, you know, went through SR1, SR2 over the last several years, gear, other various uh, pots of uh, um, funding, as well as our uh, title programs, um, also known as, you know, our categorical spending is, you know, the technical phrasing of this is the category that this money can be used for. So, yeah. Key care development for Title II, uh, English language proficiency for Title III, etc. Um, ADA at the time of uh, filling out the uh, LCFS calculator is estimated to be about 3,336.66. This number will fluctuate and we'll have better information around uh, second interim once we get P1 <laughs> data submitted. Uh, at the end of this month, beginning of next month, and then um, we'll be closer to where P2 is to get a fuller picture of what a, the true ADA is. Um, here's a breakdown of the various uh, revenue types where you'll see that, you know, on the other state revenue, a big portion of the jump is there, and that's that ELLP funding um, continuing, and then a a little bit of a bump up in the LCFF uh, state revenue. That's where the uh, property taxes uh, are, and the others are more or less flat. They're you know not quite as dramatic, especially as the um, other state revenue. Uh, so expenditures, budget expenditures at this point are sixty-seven million eight hundred twenty-nine thousand. Um, Again, we're still working through uh, COVID funds and other one-time funds, so it's another area of, if we're not using these one-time funds, by the time they expire, we have to give the money back, so it doesn't behoove us to hold on to that money just to then try to get back in the state plus the interest that's accrued on that money. Action that this year that's part of the LCAP is the part of the high school cafeteria. So with that $7 million itself, it's larger than any other LCAP action we've ever, individual action that we've done. So for the sake of being able to, you know, realizing that that money's coming from carryover carry uh, from prior year LCAPs, I removed that so that, you know, to get a truer estimate of what our uh, total employee uh, cost is at this point of salary and benefits where, this year, like prior years, uh, the start of the year is, you know, they're starting the year with um, vacancies on certificated side, classified administrative side, so that, you know, once we get through the rest of the year, um, that number will come up a little bit. Um, we're still in negotiations with both the CSEA and RTA uh, at this point, and not you know, ha having a clear picture of where are we going to be for that tentative agreement. Um, that'll uh, 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 change uh, so, uh, these expenses. And then just as a note at the bottom, um, our enrollment has continued to increase beyond, okay, yes, there's a little bump because of UPK and that TK window expanding wider and wider. We're, we're experiencing growth everywhere. It's not just, okay, at the lower levels in those grade spans. It's at the middle school. It's at the high school. So just... Serious consideration is the district is we needs to look at property and you know sooner than later in terms of possibly setting up another campus so that you know we're not totally busting at the seams and um, everything there that you know we're taking advantage of you know space that we you know um, this is a. The breakdown of the expenditures on the uh, both the salary sides, you can see it's dipped down a little bit from what the July 1 budget was and then where we are at first end term. Again, this will take back up uh, with second end term once um, we have a larger window than just July 1 to October 31st to look at for uh, um, actual expenditures. So that will increase it a little bit as some of those holes from the beginning of the year have been filled. And then also, you know, knocking on some sort of 
part of the board would, you know, we have a you know, clear picture on where we are, salary wise, with negotiations and everything uh, by the time we present second interim. Um, and then um, where you can see that um, services and other operating expenses right now is at hefty $14 million. That's where the bulk of that uh, high school uh, cafeteria project is. So if you're looking this year versus prior years, you're going to see a dramatic spike there. And it's because, you know, there's a very large one-time project, uh, you know, coming out of LCAP there. Um, Multi-year projection. Uh, this was uh, my least uh, fun one of these to do because um, due to the delay in tax receipts by the state um, to uh, the uh, mid-November, typically would be, you know, by the time budget's coming out for the year, the state's received uh, taxes in April. They have a clearer picture of where they're going to end the year. This year there were two extensions from uh, the storms. So instead of an April cutoff for taxes, it got bumped back October, which was in itself kind of, you know, frustrating to be budgeting for a year while the state wasn't entirely sure where they were going to be revenue-wise uh, given uh, taxes. And then that deadline got pushed even further back from October to November which delayed the legislative analyst office from being able to release their uh, annual report of what is tax receipts and what does that look like for the state. Then current fiscal year and going forward. Um, so early December this year, we find out that the state is $26 billion short of what the expected tax revenues were for 23 uh, or for 22, 23, which is not the, Best news to find out six months after the year has ended almost um, that the, you know there's a 26 billion dollar shortfall there and um, while the state was projecting a minor deficit I'm gonna say minor it's still a, a billion dollars or more but overall for state economy not the most serious number yeah um, but um, it's exacerbating that to the point that at the moment, legislative analyst office is expecting a budget deficit for the state of $68 billion. So um, while overall the last several years, education has been, you know, a very high priority of uh, the state in terms of funding. We're not, um, we're not entirely really sure what's going to happen. We'll find out next month uh, when the governor does his uh, January presentation of the um, early stages of the plan for 24-25 of is the state going to look at pulling money out of reserves? There's money in reserves. There's other mechanisms um, such as deferrals that could happen. We're not, you know, we'll find out more in about a month when the governor does his presentation. But, um, so it leaves a large question mark of it has the other two drop for the last year, year and a half or so. UCLA uh, uh, Anderson School of Business has predicting, been predicting that the state will enter a mild recession. We're not sure, you know, if the state scales back on spending or starts deferring, if that's going to, you know, aid that on any further. Um, uh, I was reading this morning that the Fed is. Uh, looking at cutting interest rates uh, in the future, not currently at the moment, but the next you know, few quarters, maybe you know, scaling back a little bit of uh, the interest rate hike that's happened over the last few years uh, as they try to curb inflation, where um, uh, yeah, talking about uh, 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 inflation, uh, well, uh, you yeah. know, Talk a little bit more about uh, upcoming COLA in a second uh, for the out years. But let me talk about the uh, this year for the multi-year projection of it's a lot of the same information we already talked about. Um, uh, what the assumptions are. Um, our COLA this year is 8.22. That's where a portion of that was came out of one-time funds. We'll find out what impact that has for next year's COLA. If you know, or other programs from next year that it, to fund the COLA this year, they, you know, 
went ahead and paid it there and they're gonna cut it later um and then the multi-year projection at this point doesn't increase or include a salary increase of with the negotiations because again not really having a clear picture on you know where we're going to wind up and, and then um subsequent year this is where you know a lot of the information i just said about the you know especially next year's deficit where it comes into play um the uh first uh um dartboard for the year so there's a tool that uh, comes out of called the dartboard of what is cola going to look like for the next few years what are the stirs and purrs rates going to be what are uh you know um per student funding for ada you know um the original estimate for uh, next year's cola for that was 3.94 percent so that's what i originally made the multi-year projection with and then we got the news about all the tax stuff so i revised the multi-year projection for next year down to what the uh Legislative Analyst Office is projecting at 1.27. This is only a projection. There's still another uh, quarter's worth of data to come in to figure out where is that number going to come out in the formula. Um, I've seen estimates as high as 1.5. And then on the other hand, estimates as low as 0.5. So we're somewhere in the middle there. You know, going to try and be a little bit class hat full on it we will see but you know and just because that's what the cola statutory cola is it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be the funded cola if the state is you know an absolute cut mode and defer mode there's a very high likelihood that the cola will be zero and deferred into another year where you know um where when it looked like uh the uh onset of covid uh coming out of uh, the uh, 1920 school year into the next year of what was COLA going to be? Was it going to was it going to be a negative number? Was it going to be, you know, zero? Where wound out that it was zero or it was a, there was a COLA, but there were also deferrals to go with it. So we you know, went five months without getting any revenue from the state that then got paid back at the subsequent fiscal year. So. You know, there's a lot of uh, moving parts. Uh, and then uh, stepping column increases uh, are estimated at 2 to 3.3% uh, for uh, each of the uh, classified or uh, certificated. And then um, uh, employee uh, pension increases are, you know, based off of what the dartboard estimate are. And, um yeah the categorical funding for uh, federal <coughs> programs is projected relatively flat but you know it'll change with upp but you know i'm not anticipating any large uh, increase or decrease there on the federal side um overall this is where um any fund balances are projected which um Overall, we're healthy, which is good because if you know all of the worst case scenario play, you know pieces come into play for the end of this year, start of next school year, we can yeah you know, we're not on our heels trying to immediately figure out how to pivot and what to do. Um, so um, the uh, required minimum for uh, district our size for our reserve is three percent, which honestly for us doesn't cover a payroll um so you know while there is a required minimum and there's little to no runway if we were to be in a position to okay we got to start showing into reserves and we don't have revenue coming so you know thankfully uh you know the silver lining from covid continues to be it gave us an opportunity to rebuild the reserve uh, from uh when i started my first year here the our uh, reserve percentage was negative one percent which is four percent lower than a three percent minimum so not a great place to be um but you know be, being able to have the one-time funding is you know thankfully well specifically southern current helped and then as quickly as our enrollment has 
rebounded to what it was prior to COVID and then continued to expand has also been a benefit there. So, you know, really um, the other thing that's really missing is getting our ADA back to where it was pre COVID, where we're, you know, low 90% as opposed to mid 90% or higher, which would, you know, like pre COVID would be, you know, the county and state would be like, what, you know, absolutely mortified of what is happening here. But, you know, ADA is not just, you know, it's not a negative trend just solely for us. It is a statewide issue, but it's still an issue and we are still funded based off of ADA. Um, while some of the uh, requirements around it and what that formula is have morphed to try and not, you know, be as heavily penalized for uh, districts that have declining enrollment. Like it's still a major component of what our funding is and really a major component of what our mission is to educate kids. It's hard to do that when they're not here and anything else. So this is where our uh, other funds are. So everything else prior to now has been the general fund, which is, you know, large part of, you know, the bread and butter of everything aside from the cafeteria fund, which is its own bread and butter. Okay, no, no pause for laughter. <laughs> um, <laughs> where uh, our, our fund 13 uh, continues to be uh, relatively robust and healthy, which is good. Um, capital facilities fund is uh, our developer fee, so it's doing all right. Uh, I've gotten information about more development coming, so that number could be changing before the uh, end of the year. Uh, fund 35 is where most of the major construction will be. Um, ending balance is projected at zero for now just because ultimately when the construction is all said and done, all of that money should be gone. Um, so um, realistically, we'll probably have some sort of ending fund balance uh, with uh, the West Park project uh, um, that um, additional funding coming in and that project uh, obviously won't be completed before the end of this fiscal year, but We'll at least have a you know a better idea in second in term of where we are with that and what that timeline looks like um, for those uh, UPK classrooms there. And that is the end of my slideshow. Thank you. Okay. Any questions? <laughs> Um, certified district first interim report with positive certification. Um, motion by Mario. Um, yeah. Um, I have a question. Oh, do you have any? Um, what does this mean? The certified district first interim report with positive certification. Or just basically agreeing that the interim report is correct? Okay, uh, positive certification means that the district will be able to meet its financial obligations both, or well, in the current year, so this fiscal year, and uh, in the out years of our multi year projection. If it's a qualified uh, certification, that means we'll be able to meet current year and one of the years in the multi year projection, but there may be a uh, shortfall in either next year or the year after the multi year projection. And the negative would be that we're not able to meet any obligation this year or in the out years. So, that's, so uh, positive certification is uh, right now we're doing okay. Yes. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 The question is uh, approve E rate year 27, uh, 2024, 2025, request for proposal number 2024 01, 470 pound 24000 this is um, this is a request for proposals uh, to purchase network switches 
uh, which will um, upgrade our network, will improve the speed of our network. Uh, this is done through E-Rate. E-Rate is the federal program uh, run through the FCC uh, that pays districts to, uh, it, it pays 90% of our, our internet, uh, our ISP costs to, to Spectrum, um, and it pays 85% of our purchase of network equipment to upgrade our network. Uh, so this is to get approval to submit a request for proposals uh, to purchase network switches. Um, that'll go out tomorrow, upon, assuming the board approves. Um, and then in January, we'll come back to the board with the winning request, for, um, with the winning bid, and then we'll purchase the switches and E-Rate will pay 85%. Um, if we accept. Motion by Maria. Second. Yes. Okay. Oh. Thank you. Do you have any advice? I advise that we um, go ahead and do this. <laughs> <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. All in favor? Aye. All the advice from that is Thank you. All right. Personnel items. Uh, Please perform the list of personnel items. Ms. Hargis? Um, yes. They approve and enter it. No motion. Motion by Maria. Okay. I don't even know your name anymore. Motion by Paul. I'll second it. Thank you by Carol. Any advice? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Oh, you already know that one. Sorry. Yeah. Oh. 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 Eight or nine. Eight or nine. I'll do it together. 